This is a pretty cool helmet, right? Be a shame if I didn't wear it, despite the fact that this is the reason why you're watching the show in the first place. And then gave it over to someone else halfway through. <laughs> Star Wars. Hello guys, this is my review for The Book of Boba Fett, and unlike Boba, I'm actually going to keep the helmet on for as long as I possibly can. This is the way. Until I listen to the audio from this. This is the way. This show is a kind of a filler, more so a, hey, watch this until Mando Season 3 comes back, or really when Pedro Pascal is available after having worked on The Last of Us series. This is the way. Now I'll admit I've never been one of those people who has always been truly fascinated with the Boba Fett character. I always thought the hype was purely because of how cool this dude looked. Admittedly, something that this show does try to do, it tries to bring back all of these elements that made the character so popular when he was first introduced via an animated and serial kind of comics right after the first movie came out back in the 70s. Does he entirely make you actually care about the character? Maybe a little bit when he has his kind of dances with the Tuscans bit, and then admittedly it comes to a rut. Now the halfway mark, is kind of a make or break for people. People just enjoying the show in general probably were really happy with it. I admittedly was happy with it. It does now make this show mandatory to watch it for you to understand what's happening in Mandalorian Season 3, which I could also say is a little bit of a detriment, if not a massive detriment to this series, because at pretty much the halfway mark of this show, it completely goes over to another character, and the Book of Boba Fett really is the book of people telling Boba Fett what to do. I liked Tamora Morrison, seeing him back as a character in Star Wars. I liked his voice. I liked that the fact that he's kind of like a dad bod version of... Boba Fett. I enjoy his elements when they have some merit to them, but there are a lot of moments that just don't. They just sway in the wind, or if he's just sitting around doing this or taking his helmet off consistently, like, he definitely has a lot more screen time without his helmet on, and that's not just including the back to tanks or the Tusken Raider shit. He literally is out of his costume far more, which is a strange kind of contradiction on the show's entire basis, its premise. There's a ton of fan service in this series with the amount of characters that they bring, both from the Mandalorians as well as even some from different elements of Star Wars, including Clone Wars and the movies themselves. And those are definitely evident because you can tell they are there to make up for the lack of any kind of idea that they had. John Favaro has done a very decent job giving us pretty basic one-liner sort of serial comic book sort of storylines with The Mandalorian's first two seasons. And Book of Boba just kind of like everything runs out. I feel that they have absolutely no gas in the tank for this one. They were using as little creative juices as they could because they just didn't have anything. They didn't have anything really to work with. Like, hey, this is how he came back. When it comes to its climax against the big bad gang group, you kind of don't care. The action is really fun, but once everything is said and done, you almost feel like you've wasted your time and you just watched it for a reason that was a completely ulterior motive than the actual title slash main supposed character of the series you've been watching. Book of Boba Fett is fun-ish, I guess, depending on which episodes you watch. Some of them are really decent, some of them are horrible. There are fun cameos of characters from different shows. There is way too much time given to these Zoomer kids on their multicolored little bicycles. I understand that it is a reference to American Graffiti, but the fact that these guys look like cyberpunk cosplay characters in Star Wars, they're too clean, they don't really work here, and they're also kind of dumb too. When they fix Mulan, they put all the android bits into her, all the cybernetics, and Boba's like, let's cover that up. And the guy's like, oh, why would you want to hide all that machinery? I don't know, how about the fact that this entire planet is made up of fucking sand, you fucking idiot? You have a poison in your mind, and the fact that you can't see it makes me so sad. In the end, Book of Boba Fett is a fun time for fan service. It is definitely relying on you having watched Clone Wars and the previous two Mandalorian seasons, and really it doesn't even focus as much on its title character as it should, and it eventually gives it away to the thing that kind of everyone wants, and I think that was kind of the idea that at four episodes in, they're just like, ah, whatever, let's just go to the thing that we know everyone really wants to watch. So in the end, I'm gonna give the Book of Boba Fett a three out of seven. It's... 
I, I can't give it a positive because it doesn't focus on its main character enough to warrant it, and it just totally derails. I'm not saying that the derailment wasn't enjoyable, those were some of the best episodes of this series. And when, when your series is about someone completely different from who you're supposed to be talking about, you've kind of lost the point. In the end, I think that was kind of the idea. I don't think that Filoni and Favero had a full-fledged idea with Book of Boba or with the character of Boba Fett. I think they're just like, yeah, we'll make a few episodes and we'll focus on someone else and then we'll just make it work together. Blah. Everyone just wants something to fill in the time gap between now and season three of Mandalorian. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. See, so you kept the helmet on the whole time.